Let's take a look at the cocoa industry in West Africa. Of course, this in a context where we've got uh, Ivory Coast playing a very big role. Now, there are rumors that the positive cocoa output we've seen in Ghana is simply as a result of a cocoa being smuggled from the Ivory Coast and uh, output via the Ghana ports. Uh, what are you making of that uh, rumor? Is there any truth to it? Yeah. Ken, can you hear me on that end? Yes, I can hear you now. Let's get into it because uh, we've seen reports suggest uh, a surge in Ghanaian production and output and rumors are that it's as a result of cocoa being smuggled through from Cote d'Ivoire. What are you making of the rumors that are currently doing the rounds? Yes, I think so um, because naturally um, Ghana is the direct neighbor of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And once uh, there was a kind of blockage on the uh, sales of cocoa because of the, uh, what Quattara you know, uh, was trying to do, then uh, people who want to go into business will naturally want to find a way to sell their product. And so uh, Ghana becomes a very, very vegetable avenue for them to push. When we look at this, uh, therefore, you will discover that the volume of cocoa beans that is traded in Ghana will naturally increase. And that's the reason why the boost. Yes, it's possible that uh, the cropping in Ghana increased, but I can tell you that it is because of the uh, smuggling activities from Côte d'Ivoire that made the volume to go very, very up. So in anticipation of the next kind of output data we see filtered through, are you anticipating a reverting back, a lowering of output and production out of Ghana specifically? Um, well, um, the thing is, I think you need to take that question again. I can hear you. Uh, just taking a look at things now, with uh, peace having evolved over in Cote d'Ivoire, are you anticipating a trending lower then of the kind of output numbers we've seen emerge from Ghana moving forward? Um, yes. Um, I think um, the, product, the, the, the production in Ghana is going up. And the moment uh, the war in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, as the war has ended, um, naturally, there should be some kind of time for the uh, situation to improve. That may take some two, three months before we can see the true position of things. Within that West uh, African scenario, then, where exactly does Nigeria fit into this picture? Well, the, the situation in Nigeria is, uh, is a bit uh, different. Now, Nigeria's cocoa industry is deregulated. And so once the war is there, the foreign buyers, the multinationals, find it convenient to just come to Nigeria and uh, begin to buy off the cocoa. Nobody is controlling them. Whereas in Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, some kind of focus and emphasis is given to the uh, manufacturers, that is the processing industries. Now, because the Nigerian market is open, the processors are vulnerable, pressure comes on the cocoa beans and the prices go up. And that's why we have the situation on ground now. Well, we seem to have a phone ringing on that side and a very happy tune to it, uh, Akin. Let's, uh, let's move on, though, and try to just get past that very quickly. In terms of the challenges that the industry does uh, face over in Nigeria, particularly, it's concern around the fact that we aren't seeing, uh, you know, process actually happening in the country itself. Just how much of a hindrance do you see this being to industry? Yeah, the cocoa processing industry in Nigeria is... Uh under pressure and uh, because like I said the pressures of the multinationals as a result of the deregulated market is increasing the price and if you look at the cost of uh, the infrastructure decay in Nigeria it's also complicating the problem now what we expect the government of Nigeria to do um, is to kind of follow up on the policy on the oil sector for example I'm aware that uh, the petroleum industry bill has just been passed which is what kind of um, is helping Nigerians, the indigenous people, to go into the oil sector. We can see a lot of activities going on in that sector now. So what we expect for the, in the Nigeria, as indeed in West Africa, is that emphasis should be on processing, adding value, and that can assist the industrialization of this um, uh, sub-region of Africa because agriculture is a major item. And since we have this cocoa, government should place emphasis more on processing. That will assist industrialization increase of job and uh, of course it will strengthen the foreign exchange earning capacity of these countries. In Nigeria we expect government to do something, there should be a concerted effort. Emphasis must be placed on processing as against multinationals just coming in to buy the raw cocoa and going away with it like that. 
You see, when they come with the uh, money and buy the cocoa, they are taking away Nigerian jobs and they are taking the potential of our growing into an industrial nation. Of course, that industry very dependent on cocoa prices themselves. I mean, we've had uh, cocoa prices move to the highest in three decades with supply from Cote d'Ivoire at a stage impeded to an extent. What's your outlook on that price curve moving forward? Yeah, the situation might still continue like this for some time. Uh, the price is high and it's still likely to go high. Like I said, um, the end of the war, uh, will take, it will take some time for the market to adjust itself. It will take time for the market to correct itself. I expect the market should start corrections on two, three, four months. So, and that will match up with the new coming uh, main crop season, sometimes in September, October. I see a situation whereby cocoa prices will remain high up till September this year.